Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I want to ask you a question. This is actually a question that God asked. Now, this is Haggai chapter 11, chapter 2, excuse me, verses 11 through 14. Thus saith the Lord. <laughs> okay. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Ask now the priest concerning the Lord, saying, If one bear holy flesh in the skirt of his garment, and with his skirt do touch bread or pottage or wine or oil or any meat, shall it be holy? And the priest answered and said, No. Then said Haggai, If one that is unclean, by a dead person, excuse me, by a dead body, touch any of these, shall it be unclean? And the priest answered and said, it shall be unclean. Hmm. Now, then he said, this is God's response. Then answered Haggai and said, so is this people. And so is this nation before me, saith the Lord. And so is every work of their hands. And that which they offer there is unclean. Now, a lot of us think we can walk and skate and, and slip and slide through life and do our do and do our thing. No problem. We're born again. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Hello, we're good to go. We're holy. We're righteous. He counted us as righteous because his blood paid the cost. However, how you handle that blood is a whole different ball game. If I give you, this is Pat talking, Pat's two cents. If I give you a sanitized instrument and it is totally free of bacteria and you have not washed your hands and I lay it in the palm of your hand. Can you use that instrument on anybody without fear of infection? Rhetorical. No. Why? Why? Because the hands have bacteria. The bacteria transfers to the instrument. Even though it started out sanitized, it ended up contaminated, unclean. So it has to go through the, sanit the sanitizing process all over again. Now, a lot of you think you can climb out from under the sheets of him or her. Hey. Mm. And you're just fanning because it was such a hot, steamy night. Woo! Boy, did we get down. Let's get it on. So you get it on. You do what you are big and bad enough to do because you are three times seven. Now, you go to church. Hello. You get ready to sing the songs of Zion and pray the prayers in the mic and read the scriptures and preach the word, whatever you're doing. And you really think that God is all right with it. Really? Huh. Now he says in his scripture, this is God speaking, be ye holy for I am holy. So if you have something that you want to, to remain sanitized, you not only have to wash your hands, you have to sanitize your hands and put on surgical gloves that have not been contaminated with anything. That's what surgeons do. And that's why surgeons are so clean and so specific about 
all the instruments and the area and the sheets and the garment, everything has to be cleaned and sanitized, disinfected. It's very serious. The infections, people have died from blood infections just from being in the hospital. And that wasn't what they went in for. So it's very serious. And many of you are mishandling the things of God and there are born again Christians in those churches, in those gatherings who are spiritually dying because of the liberties you are presuming to take with your unclean hands doing what you want to do, when you want to do it, thinking God owes you to, to forgive you just because you ask. Uh, you can't take that one to the bank, baby. Because God says, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Just because you ask for it doesn't mean you're going to get it. Because God knows when your heart is filled with regret, not wanting to get caught, not wanting to be exposed, and he knows when you are operating out of godly sorrow. It breaks your heart that you fell. It breaks your heart that you disappointed God. But when you have the attitude, God is a loving God. He knows my heart. He, he, he understands my needs. I just ask him to forgive me. Don't take that one to the bank, baby. It may bounce. Bounce your behind all the way down. In an area you don't want to go. Because God knows how to lift his grace off of you. He knows how to remove his mercies. He knows how to, how to disintegrate his favor. And when all hell breaks loose in your life and you wonder, well, <clears throat> how come God's not on his job? Maybe because you weren't on yours. Okay, not trying to fuss, but you know what you're living. And you know how you really feel about it too. You know if you're really trying and you know if you're playing them for a patsy. But guess who knows it even before you do? He knows everything. So you can't run. You can't hide. You can't lie. You can't psych him out. Because he knew what was in your heart before you knew you were even going to do the dastardly deed. Again and again and again. Now, all I'm saying to you is please take this thing seriously. You really think you can pussyfoot around with your so-called walk with Christ. But see, God said this, how can two walk together except they be agreed? If they're not agreed and one is going in one direction and another's going in a different one, after a while, guess what? Never shall the twain meet because they're not even together any longer. They're on two completely different paths. So I ask you, are you on the straight and narrow, the path to righteousness, the path to holiness, the path that is designed by God? the path that leads to eternal life. If not, you better rethink your route. 